Understanding WeatherTrack H2O two-wire decoders. Hello WeatherTrack listeners and thanks for joining me today. This is the WeatherTrack training manager Ben Coffey and today we're going to discuss the H2O two-wire decoders and talk about which decoders you'll need for your project. My goal is to give you an overview of the single station decoder, the two station valve decoder, the master valve decoder, the flow sensor decoder, the pump start decoder, and the surge arrestor decoder. I plan to not only talk about each individual decoder, but give you a demonstration of programming those decoders at the controller so you'll be set up for success on the day you install. Let's begin by discussing the single station decoder, which is by far the most common decoder that you'll use on your WeatherTrack H202 wire system. Because every station or zone or valve that you have on your system will need to be accounted for by a decoder. So the single station decoder is designed to handle one valve and the decoder will be wired in between the two wire path and the valve in the field to handle all of the operation of that valve on the two wire system. It's important to note that two wire decoders are proprietary, so the decoders match up to the control system that they're using. This is important because if you are replacing an existing system with a WeatherTrack H202 wire, you also have to replace all of the existing decoders from the previous system. Because on any two wire system that you're using, the controller is only capable of managing its own type of decoders. So when we're installing a WeatherTrack controller, we also need to install WeatherTrack decoders on every station. It's also nice to know that the single station decoders can be ordered pre-programmed with the station numbers already on the decoder to save the installer time in the field of programming each decoder on the day they install. Let's start by discussing the single station decoder part number WT2W-H2O-1VD. Notice all the fancy labeling on the bag when we flip it over. The back of the bag is where we've printed the installation instructions. This is the process you'll go through when you're in the field to physically install the decoder on the two wire path and on the valve. So we're not going to go through the process of physically installing the decoder today, but you see the installation instructions on the bag and the wiring diagram as well as the warning there on the bottom that says always use the right wire nuts. So don't throw away the bag. You dump out the bag and you'll see that we've got the decoder and all of the proper wiring connections. So we set these aside for when we're done. And then we have our single station decoder with the red and the black wires that go to the two wire path and the white and orange wires that will go to the station valve. To assign a single valve decoder to a station, we plug the decoder into the terminal located on the mini chassis board. Look on the terminal board for the block labeled station program and you'll see on the board where the red and the black wires go. So we start by plugging the red and black wires into the terminal located on the mini chassis. Then we hit setup and forward arrow until we get to setup 15 which is a screen called configure h202 wire and here you'll hit plus until the screen reads program decoders then you'll hit select then you'll hit star then when you hit the star button the controller reads the decoder so you'll want to press the plus or minus button to make sure you assign it to the right station so hit the plus button until you get to the station that you want to assign to this decoder and then hit the star button. The next question asks if you want to change the power level for the decoder. For most stations I leave that on low unless I know I have a high current valve. And then I press the star button to configure the decoder. And that's when the screen will read programming successful. And the little orange that you see on the screen there indicates the decoder wire color that's associated with that valve. So the orange wire is associated with that station. This becomes important when we have dual decoders or a decoder where we need to differentiate which hot wire goes to which valve. And then we label the decoder and unplug it from the station program terminal. A couple of pro tips and tricks for the single station decoder. The first of which is that labeling your decoders is key. So remember to immediately and clearly label your decoders because we want to avoid duplicate decoders with the same address on the system. So we want to make sure that no two decoders have the same address because this will create a conflict that takes time to troubleshoot down the line. And don't forget it's always important to properly document where the decoders are because this will minimize troubleshooting in the future. 
In fact, you should download the WeatherTrack 2-Wire Installation Guide where we walk you through the installation step-by-step, -step, including a very handy worksheet that we provide to document each decoder, its serial number, and other vital information. So please use this worksheet to help keep track of your decoders. Next, we want to talk about the two-station valve decoder, or what I call the dual decoder. And this comes with all of the same talking points as the single-station valve decoder, where again, every station will need to be accounted for by a decoder. And the decoders are proprietary, so for a weather track controller, you'll need the weather track decoders. And the two-station valve decoder can be ordered pre-programmed or with the station numbers or station addresses already programmed onto the decoder. The key difference between a two-station valve decoder and a single-station valve decoder is that the two-station valve decoder will actually operate two valves in the field. And the advantages here are twofold. First, from an economic standpoint, a dual valve decoder costs slightly less than two single-station decoders. In addition, by operating multiple valves on a single decoder, we limit the number of cuts that we make into the two-wire path, and therefore limit the potential points of failure on the system. Now let's have a quick look at the two-valve decoder. That is a single decoder that will operate two stations in the field. Part number WT2W-H2O-2VD. And again, the installation instructions are printed on the back. Use adequate care when installing the dual valve decoder on the two wire path. And then this one decoder gets wired to two valves in the field. So you'll see the installation instructions and the wiring diagram and then warning about using the proper wire nuts or the 3M DBRY-6s that come inside the package. So we see what's inside here. And again, you see the decoder comes with proper wire connections for every wire on the device. And then you'll see the decoder and you'll see the LED diagnostics and the black and red wires that wire to the two wire path and the white, which is the common, the orange and the yellow wires that are coming off of the decoder that go to the two valves in the field. A dual valve decoder is assigned the same way a single valve decoder is assigned. However, when assigning a dual valve decoder, the stations will automatically assign in order of the next two stations in sequence. So when programming a dual valve decoder, the first thing we do is plug the decoder into the terminal located on the mini chassis. Again, you'll see the red and black valve wire terminals on the station program tool on the valve wire terminal board. Then once everything is plugged in, you'll hit setup and then the forward arrow until you get to setup 15 where you'll see configure H202 wire. Then you'll hit the plus or minus until the screen says program decoders. Then you'll press select. Then you'll press the star button to assign the stations to the decoder. Then use the plus or minus buttons to assign the first station in sequence. Remember that the second station on the dual valve decoder will automatically be the next station in sequence. So by assigning the first station, you're assigning both station numbers. Then you'll hit star and you'll see in the upper right hand corner the station addresses for both the first and the second valve on that station decoder. After the first press of the star button, you'll be able to adjust the power level on the decoder. Again, the default is low and then press the star button again to configure that decoder at which point you get that programming successful message and you see that station 3 will use the orange wire on the decoder and station 4 will use the yellow wire on the decoder as the hot wire that connects to the field valve. Then remember to label the decoder and unplug it from the station program terminal. And just like with the single station decoder, with the dual decoder, labeling is key because we want to avoid duplicate decoders programmed to the same station. So keeping your station straight, even on dual decoders, is an important part of the process. Also, you can order dual decoders pre-programmed from the factory. But if you do this, you want to be very specific while you're ordering and identify which two stations you want the dual decoder to share. So we can be sure to format your decoders correctly to help achieve the goal of saving you time in the field when you're installing. Now we move on to the master valve decoder. It's important for WeatherTrack users to understand that when dealing with a master valve, you have two different options on how you can connect that master valve to the controller. The first and preferred option is to direct wire the master valve to the controller or connect that master valve using its own specific wire path, just as you would on a conventional wire system. 
The reason we prefer and recommend this method is because if your master valve is wired to the two-wire path and something happens to that two-wire path, the issue on the two-wire path can create enough interference that the controller won't be able to activate the master valve. So with WeatherTrack, we feel like the direct wire method is the safest way to ensure that your master valve works when you need it most. This picture shows the valve wire terminal block available on the H202 wire controller that gives you the ability to direct wire as many as four separate master valves and or four separate flow sensors directly to the controller. However, sometimes the direct wire method isn't convenient or even realistic on retrofit controllers. So the H2O does give you the option to put that master valve onto the two wire path using a master valve decoder. It's also interesting to note that it doesn't have to be all one or the other, but it can be mixed and matched, some points of connection direct wired and some points of connection wired to the two wire path. To be clear, the direct wire option does not require a decoder at all. Only when you are putting that master valve onto the two-wire path will you need a master valve decoder. Now let's look at that master valve decoder. Or the MV decoder, part number WT2W-H2O-MV. So again, on the back we have the installation instructions, how to do this in the field. Use proper care when installing the device onto the two-wire path and onto the valve. So you see the instructions and the wiring diagram and the warning about using the proper wire nuts. So use the information to properly install the device. And again, the device comes with all of the necessary wire connectors. So always use the DBRYs. And then you also have the device. You see with the master valve device, you've got the black and the red where you plug the device into the two wire path. You've got the orange and the white for wiring the master valve in the field. You've got the LED diagnostics on the device. Now let's program the master valve decoder. Again, you plug the black and red wires of the decoder into the terminal located on the mini chassis board, labeled station program, and also labeled black and red. Once the decoder's plugged in properly, we hit the setup menu, and then the forward arrow until we get to a screen that says configure H202 wire on setup 15. From here, you'll use the plus and minus buttons until the screen display reads Program Decoders. Then you'll hit Select and press the Star button to begin the programming process. And you'll notice when it reads this decoder, Master Valve automatically pops up. If this is the decoder for the second Master Valve on the system, or POC2, using the plus or minus buttons, we'll have to assign this to Master Valve 2. Once I have the proper device address displayed, I'll hit the Star button again. This will allow me to select the power level for the decoder, and I usually leave it in the default, which is low. And then I hit the star button again, and you'll see the message programming successful. And there's a reminder on the screen of the hot wire for your device in the field. So remember to label your decoder, then unplug it from the station program terminal. Just as a reminder, remember that there is specific programming for the second, third, and or fourth master valve that you put on a system. So if you're programming the decoder for your second master valve, make sure to program it as MV2. It's also important to note that the WeatherTrack H20 will assume that the master valves are directly wired to the controller, and you have to program the controller specifically to look for the master valve decoder on the two-wire path. To get that done, again, we go to our setup menu, and we hit that forward arrow, until we get all the way to setup 15 where it says configure H202 wire and we will use the up and down arrows until you get to a screen called configure direct connect when you get there we'll push select find the ability to assign all four master valves either to DI or direct installation or if I hit plus or minus, I can change that to 2W, which tells the controller to look for that master valve decoder on the two wire path. And if we wanted to demonstrate the mix and match scenario, where our first master valve is directly wired to the controller, but then master valves two, three, and four all live on the two wire path. For master valve one, we would leave it as DI, but then we would use the forward arrow button to advance to the second master valve and push plus to change that to 2W and then forward and plus to change master valve 3 to 2W and then forward again and plus 
to change master valve 4 to 2W. That way the controller knows that master valve 1 is a direct installation, but 2, 3, and 4 all exist on the two-wire path. Next up we'll talk about the flow sensor decoders, or FS decoders. And just like with the master valve, when wiring a flow sensor to the weather track, you have the option to either wire that device directly to the weather track controller or add that device to the two-wire path. At weather track we prefer the security of the direct wire installation. We feel that adding a specific wire that runs between the controller and the point of connection is the most secure way to reliably transmit the data. And when you direct wire your flow device to the weather track controller, you don't need a flow sensor decoder. So pictured here, you see the wire ports on the valve wire terminal board where you would plug in a direct connection for the flow sensor one, or you can direct connect as many as four separate flow sensors onto the weather track system. Only when you want to add the flow sensor to the two-wire path and have the two-wire path manage the information and operation of the flow sensor will you need a flow sensor or FS decoder. Next up we have the flow decoder or the FS or flow sensor decoder, part number WTW-H2O-FS. And then on the back we have the installation guide, the wiring diagram, the warning about using the right wire nuts. So again, when you open the package, you'll see that the device comes with the specified wire connectors that we always, always use, the DBRY wire connectors. And then you see here the flow sensor decoder has the black and red wires that go to the two-wire path and the white, yellow, and blue wires that we'll use to wire up the flow sensor in the field. Again, we have the LED diagnostics, the power and activity light, which make it easy to troubleshoot this decoder in the field. Next up, we have the flow decoder. You'll notice that the flow decoder programs a lot like the station decoder. So the first step is to plug in the decoder into the terminal board on the mini chassis. Then we hit setup. Again, hit the forward arrow until you get to setup 15, labeled configure H2O2 wire and then the plus or minus to select the option program decoders. Once you see program decoders, hit select. Then when you push the star button, the controller will read the decoder and show you the assigned address and allow you to change it if you so choose. Notice when you install the flow decoder, the controller immediately recognizes it as such. And the option that comes up on the display is to program this as a flow decoder or FS1. If you choose to manage multiple points of connection on your two wire path, the flow decoder for point of connection 2 should be programmed as FS2. So once you've selected the proper device name for the decoder, you hit the star button, hit the star button again, and you'll see the message programming successful. And all that's left to do is unplug it from the station programming terminal. So just like with the master valve decoder, by default the decoder will come programmed as FS1 and you're going to have specific programming if you want to change that to FS2 or 3 or 4 if you're managing multiple points of connection. Also remember when you're using flow sensor decoders you have to turn them on in the weather track program so the controller knows to look for the flow sensor decoder on the two wire path. Where if you're in front of the controller you hit the setup menu and then the forward arrow until you get to setup 15 which is a screen called configure H2O2 wire. And then you'll use the plus and minus buttons to select the option configure direct connect. When you see the message configure direct connect, you hit the select button. And this is where we program how our master valves and flow sensors are wired. So if we stick with our example from last time, we have a direct installation on master valve one and then master valve two, three, and four are all two wire configurations. And then we hit the forward arrow to take us to our flow sensor settings where we set up the first flow sensor as a direct installation and then put flow sensor two, flow sensor three, and flow sensor four on the two wire path. If you have an electrically activated pump start, you're gonna need a pump start decoder. And the H2O pump start decoder is like a light switch that works in combination with a 24 volt power source to operate the pump station. As you can see from our installation instructions, the pump start decoder sits on the two wire path and then dictates when it passes the 24 volts from the transformer onto the pump relay. So it's notable that you're gonna need power at the pump as part of the installation. 
And again, we'll have two demonstrations, one showing you how to assign the pump start decoder the correct address, and then another showing you how to assign the pump start in the WeatherTrack program. Next up, we have our pump start decoder, part number WTWH20-PS for pump start. Again, we have the installation guide that has the wiring diagram and the warning about using the proper wire connectors. When we look in the bag, we see all of the proper wire connectors or the DBRY-6 wire connections that we use on every connection on the device. And here we have the pump start decoder where we have the black and red wire that will wire into two wire paths. And on this side, the three wires that we have are gray, white with black stripes, and gray with black stripes. So I'll begin showing you the process of assigning the right address to that pump start decoder. We begin the process by plugging the decoder into the station programming module on the board of the two wire controller and plugging in the red wire on the decoder into the port labeled red and the black wire on the decoder into the port labeled black. Then we'll hit the setup button and advance with the forward arrow until we get to the screen setup 15, a screen called configure H202 wire. Then you'll use the plus and minus button until the screen displays the message program decoders. Then push the select button. Then following the directions on the screen, when we hit star, the controller will read the decoder plugged into the programming port. Notice here that the controller automatically identifies this as a pump start decoder, and you'll see the address PS1 appear as your first option. If you are managing multiple pumps on multiple points of connection, you might need to use the plus or minus key to identify this decoder as PS2, 3, or 4. But for our demonstration, we want to assign this decoder as Pump Start 1 or PS1. So when PS1 is displayed on the screen, we'll hit the Star button, and that will allow us to select the power level for this decoder. Again, the default is low and should work in most applications. After you sign off on the power level, you'll hit the Star button one more time, and that will assign that address to that decoder. Then, just like on the other decoders, you'll see the message Programming Successful, and the screen will display the color code for the wiring of the pump start decoder. Then, after we disconnect the decoder from the controller and label it up, it's ready to be installed in the field, and we're ready for the second step of programming. And again, the pump start decoder will come with the default programming of PS1, or for the first pump start, and you'll have specific programming to program in the second, third, or fourth pump start if you have multiple points of connection that you manage. You also need to program the controller with which station operates the pump start, and this is where we get into a very distinct difference between the WeatherTrack conventional wire systems and the WeatherTrack H202 wire systems. With a conventional system, you're allowed to select any station and assign it as your pump start. And in contrast, the H202 wire system requires a specific station to be programmed as your pump start. So where with a conventional wire system you can choose whatever station you want, on an H202 wire, if you want to assign the pump start to the first point of connection, you have to assign that as station 1. So station 1 will be the pump start for the POC1, and station 2 will be the pump start for POC2. You can either change this on the program page at weathertrack.net or standing at the controller. If you're standing at the controller, you want to go to the flow menu, and if you hit the forward arrow one time, it takes you to your flow options. And on flow options, you're going to use the plus and minus button to look for a flow option called points of connection. And when points of connection is displayed, you'll push the forward arrow. And that will take you to where you manage the components for the individual points of connection. So here you see that you're managing POC1 and you see all of the different components on this POC. If I hit the forward arrow one time and advance the cursor underneath master valve, I can select the normally open or normally closed master valve. Then I advance to under FS1 or flow sensor 1 and this is where I can turn on or off the flow sensor. One more push of the forward arrow brings the cursor underneath PS1 or pump start 1. In this example, this is the setting I'm looking for to assign station 1 as the pump start for POC1 on my two wire path. And the last H2O decoder we want to talk about is the surge arrestor. As with any two wire system, grounding on the H2O controller is incredibly important. And so you're going to need to ground the two wire path with a surge arrestor at key locations in the system to make sure that the two wire path is grounded. 
specifically we're going to require search arresters in the following locations first somewhere within 25 feet of the controller and then up and down the two wire path like at the end of every branch on the two wire path that's 50 feet or greater and then at least one grounding location every 600 feet with additional grounding being recommended in high lightning areas for instance in Florida we recommend having grounding every 300 feet along the two wire path and if you want to test the grounding on your two wire path we're looking for an earth to ground resistance of less than 25 ohms to go by the books and really if we can get less than 10 ohms that's really what we're shooting for so calculate how many grounding locations you'll need along your two wire path then attach the surge arrestor decoder onto the two wire path then use a split bolt connector to attach a surge arrestor to the number six bare copper wire and attach your number six bare copper wire to a grounding point usually a grounding rod or grounding plate and last but not least we have the weather track surge arrestor these are used at the grounding points part number wtw-h20-sa again on the back of the bag we have the installation instructions and the wiring diagram how to attach the surge suppressor both to the two wire path and to the grounding device in the field like the grounding rod and then the warnings about using the proper wiring connections and when we empty this out we see we've got the proper wire nuts and you'll have the WeatherTrack H2O surge arrestor decoder that has the red and the black wire that you'll attach to the two wire path and the green wire that you'll run to a grounding source and when choosing a good grounding location make sure to select a location where your grounding source is far enough away from the two wire path where the sphere of influence or the area where a grounding event would occur does not intersect with the two wire path so if you have an 8 foot grounding rod, the sphere of influence would be 8 feet in all direction off of that grounding rod. So we would want our two wire path to sit further than 8 feet from where that electricity is going to ground and make sure it doesn't intersect with the two wire path where it could pick back up and continue on down the line. And that brings us full circle as we've discussed the single station valve decoder, the two station valve decoder, the master valve decoder, the flow sensor decoder, the pump start decoder, and the surge arrestor decoder. On behalf of the whole HydroPoint team, I'm Ben Coffey saying thanks for your interest in HydroPoint H202 wire decoders. And if you have further questions, please contact us at support at hydropoint.com.